All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and it's a it's a big day for me because uh, I have Michael Baychuk on, and just okay. For those of you that don't that don't know, again, uh, I I'm I'm good at a lot of things. You know, I was really good at poker, really good at back end, whatever it is. But my nickname Sheets was was originally derived from uh, a data product called The Sheets, which uh, was from my original gambling love, and that would be horse racing. When I was younger. Um, when I was basically when I, between I was 16 to say 19, I was probably at, at Meadowlands Harness Racing more times than I would say in any other building that I didn't work in my entire life. OK. Um, and then when I went to college, I kind of got more into stock market, and didn't really do much horse racing. But then when I moved to New Orleans, um, I for three years of law school, basically spent 10 percent of the time in law school, 40 percent of the time trading stocks and 40% of the time at the fairgrounds, okay? And, and, and the fairgrounds, that is the, the big horse racing venue there. And I did simulcasting of the Louisiana Downs there. I got, made a couple of trips out to Evangeline. And this is, you know, not, not too many New Yorkers get to go to Evangeline Racetrack, okay? Um, let's just put it that way. And that's where I, I really cut my teeth about horse racing. This is before I even, I even bought my first set of sheets. I was, I was, a real old school handicapper in New Orleans. I kept, I've kept notes on every horse. I have these big red freaking notebooks where I would note like, the action of these horses down the lane. I would show up for the training races on Tuesdays at New Orleans. And, 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 and it was, it was, it was, it was really an awesome time, you know, and everybody in law school just kind of knew me as the guy that did that. And to give you an example there, and I've, alluded this to alluded this to you before in chat like like a year ago is you know there was one time where the where buddy d who was kind of like the new orleans like horse racing legend he kind of hosted the kind of the pre-show at, at at jefferson downs and sometimes at the fairgrounds and he sometimes had guests on for handicapping and i and he asked me once to come on to uh to be a guest uh, handicapper on the uh on the jd on the jd show and I had like a moot court thing that night at, at, in, uh, at, for law school. And I basically faked sick for my moot court thing. So I could go to be on the, on the buddy, on the buddy <laughs> B show, you know? So, so, and, so it was, it, it was awesome. And, and so that led me to when I moved to Los Angeles and I did horse racing out there, I did my pick six syndicates. Then I got into the sheets and stuff like that. So when we were, you know, when I, I launched the, the, the true DFS with Bobby, and Mike was in here, just kind of like commented a couple of things on horse racing. And I'm like, or even was on Twitter. I'm like, who, who, who's this guy? I don't recognize him. And then I just kind of like just went out and said, oh, I was once on the Buddy D show. Oh, well, how about this? I've been writing for freaking the Times Picking You for 30 years or something like that. I'm like, oh, wait, you're the guy. So so, so, so just to, to introduce him, Michael is is kind of, I guess, I don't want to say a legend in, uh, to embarrass him, but but let's just put it He's been in the Louisiana um, horse racing scene for quite a long time um so what i'm going to do i was going to introduce him he's going to talk about who what he who he is what he does and, and all the stuff and his a little bit of a history and then yeah we're, we'll get to it we'll get to the churchill card we'll give you winners we'll give you good picks friday and saturday but unfortunately i've never had a, another horse racing person on here so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to live with it for like a little while um before we get to the picks T tell tell me your history Tell me what you do now, horse racing wise, and and then we'll proceed from there. So I'm just, I, I just want to say, you know, I've done. Thank you, Sheets. I appreciate this. I've done I don't know hundreds of these over the past, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, I, this is by far the number one thing I've looked forward to doing this with Sheets because you, I mean, you're a legend, and I'm going to just give you a little history about how uh, you know I came into horse racing and then my decision making and how you you actually influenced it and helped me you know win at horse racing um, and that's why I'm here on the true DFS site because I'm trying to transition a little bit out of horse racing into something else that's less takeout but I mean my story is is much like yours um, matter of fact we're probably we probably bumped into each other at the fairgrounds I um, I'm in Baton Rouge but I would skip school I got a job kind of kind of a job hauling something from Baton Rouge to New Orleans warehouse to warehouse when I was like 15 years old. And I would skip school, you know, the last couple of periods so I could go down there, bring the, the, the product uh, to the warehouse, but go to the track first 
and then drop the product off at the warehouse, like after the races or something like that. So uh, I know your mood court story, but I would just skip school and just go down there. I first went to the fairgrounds when I was 13 um, and the parallel with my other, you know, my other career, my job uh, politics is the first person that took me to the track was James Carville. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, for, for many, many years, I, I would cuss him because, you know, it was hard to be a winning player. Right. And I was like, man, he's costing me so much time and money because he, he introduced me to something that I really love. But that was my first uh, introduction to the track. And, and, you know, for, for, I would go to the fairgrounds and you mentioned Jefferson Downs, which was during the summer at nights, you know, when I was off school and I could go down there, uh, I would take my mom's car and, and drive, you know, the, the, the 45, 50 minutes to Jefferson Downs and be back home by like 10, 30, 11 o'clock and no one was the wiser. Um, so, I, you know, I, I started out just, just because it just was something that was competitive, you know, and I loved uh, the competition was what it really was trying to beat the guys, the older guys that I was going to the track with, I was going to pick better horses and, and, you know, I, I was pretty good at it, you know, um, but back then th there were, there were the pools, I guess, and this is a parallel with fantasy sports and also with poker, there was so much uh, like dead money you know, in the pools and, and, and it wasn't very sharp, right? So, you know, you doing, you going to the track and watching those training races on Tuesday, which for people don't know that, you know, it's not, it's open to the public, but no one watches them and it's horses that have never run before. Um, and then me doing things that I was doing with like workouts where I was yep. charting workouts, you know, um, those things, that was like prime information, right? Yep. And if we just would have probably stuck with that, um, we would have been, I would have been a winning player, but of course, you know, I got started betting, you know, just cause I loved it every race. And, right. um, so, you know, for the first, I don't know, 15 or 20 years betting, mostly, you know, Louisiana stuff, I was a losing player, but I was better than the field. Right. So I was, you know, probably better than 90%, you know, so I was just getting ground down and, and, and sometime around in like 2000, they started introducing um, contests into horse racing. And so I started playing, and these contests are basically like, uh, you know, you bet, you pick 10 races or they give you 10 races and you pick one horse for each race. And it's a mythical $2 to win or place. And whoever has the most money at the end of the 10 wins the contest. So I started playing those and I was terrible. I mean, just, you know, I was picking winners a lot, but I was just not, not really doing well. And, and I think the parallel to that is, you know, in DFS, if you're playing chalk, you know, if you're playing the teams and the people that are, everybody is owned, uh, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be okay. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll cash a few, but you're not going to win the, you know, the, the, the big dollars. So when I got into contests, it really changed the way I thought about how my betting was going, because you can't, you have to not pick chalk in contests. And um, I did, a, I, you know, I started doing much better in contests. Uh, I actually won like a, I don't know if you remember You Bet, which yes. is one of the first online. Well, they had a huge contest back in like, I don't know, 2000 or something. Um, and I won, placed second uh, and won 20 grand. Wow. You know, which I remember, I remember showing my right. wife and my, my mother-in-law, more importantly. When right, of course, of mail. course. I'll never forget this moment. It came in the mail. They were in the kitchen. I brought that check in there. And, you know, like I showed, here you look, see, I can win money. And, and it was a totally different thing, you know, to, 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 um, to win money at a contest. And then um, just, you know, quickly poker, online poker started somewhere around, you know, early two, I was playing a lot in the early 2000s, maybe like 2004-ish, five-ish. And I joined Poker X Factor, uh, you know, learning, try to learn how to play poker. And again, it's, it was the same kind of situation. You know, most of the people playing were like dumb money, right? So, yeah. so just having like a little bit of knowledge yeah. from, from, you know, how to play hands or how to play situations, you know, you could become a winning player. And, and I won, you know, I won money, then they shut it down. Um, but but the, the, the part about, well, I credit you because the part about making decisions in poker, you know, even though the results may not turn out the way that 
you, you know, you wanted them to, as long as you were making the right decision on a hand in a situation, you were, you know, you were going to be okay, basically. And at, at the end of the day, you know, the, the odds were going to be in your favor if you're, if you're getting the right, the best of it on a, on a hand. And I started applying that to horse racing, and especially contests. And like, you know what, you're going to lose a lot of these contests because, you know, you're, you're against the field, basically. You're against the rest of the competition. But if you're picking horses that the rest of the competition are not, and they're good picks. I mean, they're not like, you know, they'll, they're what you probably call value picks. You, when, when you do win the contest or when you do win, you know, and you have a good day, you, you're, you're going to win a lot of money, right? Yep. And so fast forward to 2012, and they have a national competition for horse racing. Uh, it's much like the World Series of Poker. You know, they bring, you know, the best 400, 500 competitors in for a weekend in Vegas and you pick horses. And, and in 2012, the, um, the top prize was a million bucks. And the year before I had finished 23rd. Um, and I thought when I walked into that room in 2012, I was like, look, there's 500 people here. There's only 50 that can win it. I'm one of them. And what happened was just, it was that, you know, perfect, perfect timing of luck and good picks. And I won the thing uh, and I won a million dollars. And so I'm, you know, the only million dollar winner in horse racing ever. I'm the leading money winner in horse racing contests, which doesn't really mean anything. Cause so that was the only I mean, time, won, that was the only time they paid a million dollars for first. Correct. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, I know. And so, I mean, I've won other things, you know, I've won other contests, but that, that kind of put me on the map and that put me on the, the, the map of, uh, you know, that's how I got to the newspaper where I've been uh, the public handicapper for the fairgrounds for the past eight or nine years, I think, which I love to do, which is just the most difficult thing, picking a day before every race, yeah. races you don't want, you know, and this year I was able to get a, a, a 94, yeah, 90, well, dollar eighty-eight return on $2 for every time okay. pick, which I thought was incredible. You know, for, I mean, I'm picking the, the day, day before down. with no odds. <laughs> exactly. Correct. So that's basically where, you know, my horse, that's my horse racing uh, career kind of. I mean, well, that, that, that's uh, great. You know, it's funny yeah. because you, you mentioned the contest and, and I just actually finished a, um, uh, I, I was, I'm chatting with my, my pick six syndicate partner and, you know, when it comes down to the Derby, you know, we will, we will play, even if it's not a good car, you know, he usually is a good car, but we'll play it anyway. Um, and he asked me, he says, Hey, should we uh, enter the contest uh, Friday and Saturday? And I've never, I've never do, do, dove in to the, to, to the horse racing contest. And the reason why I never did is because I just felt as though that there was theory involved that I just didn't know, you know, that, that, that approaching contest as you were saying, is just a different animal. And it's it's not enough to say, oh, I think that this should be three to one and I'm getting seven to one. It's also, I would imagine some some consideration of of what the leaderboard looks like, like where you stand in the contest at that time. You know, if you're if you're XYZ, XY, you know, this amount out, then pretty much any, any, I would guess, any, any favorite is just kind of out of out of the freaking out of the question, you know. And and and, and, okay. and I'm sure that my, my point is that I don't know what the theories are, but I'm sure there's there there is some. So I said to Steve, I said, well, I don't I have no interest. And the reason why I have no interest in doing it is just because, you know, I, I just don't feel as I, I know anything about it. You know, I'm sure I could, you know, slog around, make picks and, you know, be kind of slightly negative EV in it or something like that. And maybe get lucky against. Because probably I would imagine there are people that are super sharp in these contests now that have algorithms and have and, and have figured it out like everything else in this world, right? Um, but but I said, let's listen, there's got to be some kind of difference. And and what I think you you I don't know if, if you ever looked at this, but but I always wondered if horse racing as as a kind of a, a daily fantasy contest made any sense. And I'm sure that you've noticed that that stable duel has come out within the last couple of years. And, and I, I, you know, my, my partner plays it from time to time and I sometimes play, they're not, you know, they're, they're new, they're green. They don't exactly know everything of what they're doing. Right. But, but it's, uh, you know, I, we reached out to them once and I said, you, you, maybe you, you want me to do some projections or something like that. You know, they're just kind of, just kind of new. So I, I, I always fear though. I mean, when people ask if you want to do more horse racing content to me, I just feel like 
maybe I'm wrong. I feel horse racing is kind of dead. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't, I don't know if anybody plays, you know, and, and you mentioned, and we'll talk about your other stuff you got going on is, but, but, but you mentioned, I think in one of your articles is just, just, just even for you, there's just so many more options to gamble with, you know what I mean? To gamble on that, you know, the, the, who, who's really betting on horse racing, you know, it's just so, so many other, right. Like so well, many other options, you know? And, and, and so part of, you know, like I'm, I'm moved out of horse racing basically. Sure. I'll bet tomorrow. I'll bet, some, you know, Saturday. Um, but I'm not, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a one-off thing for this time, because here's the thing the the, the market horse racing market has just gotten so efficient. And so it is, it's really difficult, you know, sheets for like, you know, you, you, I used to have like a, 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 a pedigree play on turf or, or right. a workout play, you know, that, and, and those, those things are gone. Right. I mean, so that horse that used to be four to one, five to one, is now like uh, you know nine to five, two to one. And so, if you know people understand the takeout on horse racing is just so huge that um, it's just hard to overcome. And and, um, and 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 usually what people say is is this: they're like, well, you know, even even with a 16, 17, 18 percent takeout, it's para mutual. So so it's not like it's not like you're going to the casino where they give you a five percent take out you're just guaranteed to lose because you're just up against the house if you're if you if, if it's a 16 70 percent takeout if you could be that much better than quote unquote the idiots that are playing you know then you can win but that's a, that's hard man it's hard to it be that hard. much better it's than anybody harder. Anything, you know it's gotten um, harder and harder and harder and one thing you know you mentioned the thing that really turned you know made me a winning player not not outside of the contest was the pick six in california right so you know, it used to be, as you know, $2. Um, it wasn't a jackpot. You yeah. know, they paid out fives on days that people, five out of six. Went. And so I, I started doing very well at those, um, you know, because I think I had a big, somehow, I guess my edge was just a little bit bigger based over a longer stretch of races, you know. Um, and I won, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars betting the right. pick six back yeah. in the 2009, 10, 11, 12, yeah. you know-ish. Right. Um, but then, <laughs> as you know, you know, they they got rid of it. Right. And so, you know, they basically took away one of the one of the the, the, the bets that I had. I thought at least I had a, a, so, a slight so, edge so, over. So, and, so, and tomorrow I'm just going to tomorrow or yeah. there, there is a two dollar pick six at the um, I believe there's a two dollar pick six. Um, but it, maybe it's a two day for Friday, Saturday for Oaks. So I'll play that. I mean, because that, that just takes out a lot of, uh, takes out a lot of computer wagers, which is another thing that's, you know, depressing and making right. the market more, uh, more efficient. Um, but, but, it, you know, it just takes out the, 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 uh, it, it just increases my edge, I guess is what it does. So I'll, I'll play that as well. well. To give you, to give you guys kind of a history. So, so what's happened with the pick six, and then this is, this was, this was my thing, right. And, and is ever they used to have a two dollar pick six pretty much everywhere you played them right whether wherever it was and we scoured for for carryovers all over the country right so two dollar pick sixes and you know you pick six races in a row and then you know if you hit six that then you would split it with whoever else hit six okay sometimes you hit a lot sometimes you hit a little whatever it was okay and, and I I was one of those computer players I have a, I have I developed a software program that I was able to to what I would do is. You know, if I could pick like six horses here, eight horses here, four horses, I assign percentages to them and I have, you know, a ticket optimizer or would optimize and say, if I want to bet, you know, $2,000, these are the 1,000 most likely combinations. And then it would construct them in tickets that I wouldn't have to put a thousand tickets in. Right. So, 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 so we had the whole thing down. And so then what they did is they created this, this incredible soccer bet. Okay. Sort of, <laughs> they, they, they call it jackpot. And what they do it's first, a soccer they bet. Do, First thing they do is you is you can tell it's a sucker bet is they reduce it from a two dollar bet to twenty cents. That's that's like red flag number one, you know. So so now everybody can play. Everybody can play like multiple horses in every race and put something in and have a shot. But the, but the thing about the the jackpot is this for those of you who haven't that haven't been following this is is yes, if you hit six, you win. But here's the deal. A certain percentage of the pool is not eligible to be paid out if you just hit six. Okay, there's what's called a jackpot part of the pool that is reserved 
for paying a single winning ticket. So if you win the, the pick six and you are the only one on the planet that has the winning six tickets, uh, winning six, then you get that part of the jackpot. And the rest of the jackpot, if nobody's the unique one, gets kind of split up among everybody else. So what happens is, is that unless you are going to win the pick six by yourself, pretty much every other bet is negative EV, okay? Because it's all kind of like been, been, been thrown out um, and whatever. So what, what happens is, is that you have to now not just just handicap to, to hit six. You've got to handicap in a way that that all six winners have to kind of be long shots. Like you have to, you have to handicap so that it's going to be a unique ticket. And you think about this from a, from a collusion perspective. So, so if, if I'm playing X amount of tickets, okay. And you are playing X amount of tickets. It's very possible that, that, that at that moment, both of our tickets are dead for the jackpot. Okay. Because if we have anything duplicated, it literally cannot win the jackpot by definition. But the thing is like, is that nobody, people don't talk to one another. I don't know what you're betting. I don't know what they're betting. So you very well could be completely dead to the jackpot. So in an efficient world, everybody would just kind of all get together, right? And combine for one ticket and kind of split it, right? Um, so this way, at least they have a chance to be unique. But so this is what happens is it's a total freaking grind where people play favorites and, oh, I'll play this, this, this. And they're essentially just losing a fortune every single race, uh, every single time. Um, so, so, but so, you know, not that not that my friend and I don't play, but, but when we determine whether we're going to even play at all, I won't even buy the sheets for that card if I look and I see that every race has six horses in it. You know, for example, you know, like like unless you're going to get full fields, it's not even worth even buying, you know, even handicapping it. And then it, it's literally like if you get to one race where someone's like a one to five lock. You just cannot even bet the whole rate. You can't bet the bet the bet at all, you know, because you have no chance for a unique ticket. So, so these are little things that the horse racing industry does that uh, that that is kind of kind of cruel. Because you know what, the takeout's bad enough as it is, you know. Um, and, and to and to create something like this is like really really difficult. Um, so you you mentioned I have to, I, you know what, I'm I'm gonna let um people Google this I think, but. But but as you may have been able to determine by kind of Michael's tone a little bit, like he he's he's a little I don't want to say disillusioned, but but he's not. Let's put it this way: he's not he's not as um, into betting horses as he was, uh, partially because of you know the existence of other action with better 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 prospects, but also because you know the combination of of a tough takeout and a lot of look listen. Uh, criminals and thieves and, and crooks have always been in the horse racing business since since freaking Ben Hur lost from the eight hole as the favorite back in the fourteen hundreds, right or whatever. But 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 in the last you know several several years, one one could argue that you know with 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 all the drugging and all the stuff, it's gotten kind of out of hand. Um, you, you guys might remember that Bob Baffert won the Kentucky Derby on. I, by the way, I was with you. I needed that horse also, mandolin, to, to win. Um, and 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 look, the amount of people that that didn't know that Bob Baffert's been drugging horses for the last thirty years is zero. I mean, like he's just always been just kind of known as someone that does that. But but in this particular situation, I mean, it was like pretty egregious. And it turns out they 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 proved that he that he drugged the horse. And 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 Mike, he like like actually like like started like I think a class action lawsuit like trying to recover losses um, based based on that stuff. <laughs> and 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 you know the, the first thing I would ask you about this, and you know I had this conversation with somebody about something totally unrelated. But you're you're, you're are you in your fifties? You're my age. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Almost so sixty. Like, yeah. Okay. You're sixty. So 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 so, so here here's my question, and this is a question you can ask about anything, right? Is is the drugging and all that stuff really worse than it was, or are we just old and crotchety and, and, you know, and just, and just complaining more? That's a good question. I mean, um, yes, I think, I think, I think it's worse. Um, okay. I do think it's worse because, you know, you and I both have the perspective of seeing, um, you know, 40 years basically of, you know, horse racing past performances and performances on track and, you know, things that, that we see over the past 10, 15, 20, 10 or 15 years on track when a horse gets passed and then comes back and 
and, you know, wins the race. I mean, that was like, that never happened, period. End of story, you know, uh, in the 80s, right? Um, and, and didn't, so, it or, didn't it or are we just pretending? We, I, I don't think it did. Okay. I, 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 just, I just don't think it did. Um, but whether it's, you know, you know, she's whether it's more prevalent today than it was 20 years ago, it's still still wrong today as it was 20 years That's ago, true. right? So we have, you know, um, we have systems, I guess, in, that, that other sports use um, to detect who's drugging, you know, Lance Armstrong, for example. Right. Um, and so, you know, when people are wagering on, on something, yeah. um, it, it would behoove the, 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 the powers that be, in my opinion, um, in horse racing to try to make it, you know, a, a cleaner sport because people are investing their money in it and they have it. They just have not done that. Now there's things afoot now that are, you know, uh, that are in motion that it may clean it up a little bit, but, you know, I think that for me, the, you know, that was just the end of the, that was the, cam- the straw that broke the camel's back, man to learn, you know, yes, I was live for a hundred grand, uh, Yes, it, but the year before, I was live to uh, what was it Tis the Law right uh, in the pick right. six for like right. oh, uh, thirty six forty thousand yeah. okay. or something, you know. So and so this year or last year, you know, I, I made money on the Derby because I used the Baffert horse just because it was Bob Baffert with the, with Mandalone, who was thirty to one, by the way. Right, I don't um, remember. And, yeah, and and so you know, I made money, but it was like this can't be happening. And then when he got caught with the overage. You know, there's nobody out there to stick up for the for the people that are investing the money. Yeah. Um, and so I said, screw it. I'm just going to I'm going to do it. I'm just going to sue for fraud. And we have a class action. We have over 300 people. We're in federal court in New Jersey. Um, you know, we're wait. I think I don't, I don't know what kind of case we have, but there's lawyers that took the case that think that, you know, I mean, here we are, you know, um, hey, you know what, worst, 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 worst case, you know, like you said, you're standing up for the public and, 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 you know, maybe, maybe, you know, increase awareness and stuff. And maybe the horse racing industry sees the reality in that. And look, for, for, look, I want to say, forget about this, but yes, it's also a terrible thing for the animals, right. To get, to, 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 to get drugs and all this stuff, but even putting that aside, even to be, even being more soulless and cruel about it, if horse racing wants to compete with these other with these other gambling sources that are coming out there, I mean, why why would somebody want to want to want to gamble on a place that doesn't give a fair shake? You know what I mean? Um, or, the, or, or the public perception is that it's it's fixed, like people are drugging. Yeah, well, I don't know who's drugging. Oh well, I'm gonna go then. I'm gonna go play, you know, uh, tennis fantasy or whatever. Right. You know, I mean, right. it's just like it's we're in a competition. I say we, as yeah, I'm still the part of the industry, industry right. but like, you know, with all this other entertainment gambling dollar and we're, we're, we're just losing. And so I'm just, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm kind of fed up with it. And, yeah. and, and again, that, you know, you mentioned there's so many now in Louisiana, I have other options. I have fantasy daily sports yeah. and I have sports betting and I don't do a lot of sports betting, hardly any at all, but I do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the daily fantasy stuff. And, and that's where most of, you know, all of my entertainment gambling dollars, you know, are going at this point. So what we're going to do, we're going to transition into the the Friday and the Saturday card. And what I'm going to probably have to figure it out is I'm going to have Mark kind of tag this video and just kind of like do one of those chapter things. Like if you want to hear about this part, come here. If you want to go straight to the races, go here. And maybe he'll figure out how to do that. But I want to tell just one last kind of like Louisiana story, <laughs> which is, which is, which, which I, I think is really, really great because remember I'm, I'm from, Listen, I'm from New York and I came down to Louisiana. And, and one thing that, you know, that's, that's, I mean, Louisiana, they're, 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 I want to say protect their own, but they're, 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 they have a lot of pride down there. And not that they just, they don't, they don't like New Yorkers or whatever it is, but there's, there's a thing, you know what I mean? And, 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 and the, one of the first, and I'd say that as, as an example, it, I'll say this as, pre, as, as a uh, preview for this story. When I was there, I was at fairgrounds. I was, um, I was actually during this segment was uh, betting simulcast racing from Louisiana Downs. I would go there as Louisiana Downs racing. And this was, I want to say 1990. And there was, uh, now people have heard of this guy now, but back then uh, the only people I heard of were people from New Orleans, uh, from Louisiana. This the guy's name was Calvin Burrell. Okay. 
He was the leading jockey down there at, in, at Louisiana Downs. And there was this stretch at Louisiana Downs where, listen, people will say it's, it's an illusion. People will not, not believe it. But there was one of the most rail biased racetracks I have ever seen going on at Louisiana Downs. If you were not on the rail, you were dead. OK. And for a period of weeks, Calvin Burrell would take his horses, get them to the rail and win every race. Now, I, I have seen I have seen jockeys dominate racetracks before. I I, I was in, in, in New York when Chris Antley won all the races for, during a whole stretch. Uh, there was one year and I, I've seen Mike Smith. I've seen I've seen jockeys get hot. And then, you know, one snowballs off the other. Jockeys get hot, trainers give them good horses and continues. But there was this one stretch where I'm telling you, Calum Burrell won every race. Okay, I use that as, as a as, as preview. That year they had the Super Derby, which was the Louisiana Downs. That's like one of their big, uh, that, excuse me, that was like probably Louisiana's biggest race, okay? Yeah. And for the Super Derby, you always get a couple of local Louisiana horses that are just kind of okay. And then all the big superstars just come in from all over the country. Okay, million dollar race. You know, they all they all kind of come in. And in this particular day, um, Calvin Burrell is on a horse called Free Spirits Joy. Just some good little local horse in Louisiana. And in comes Best Pal from California. In comes Light Light, who was the uh, who's a filly that was uh, that was uh, owned by MC Hammer. Okay, really yeah. famous. Then I think another one might have been Olympio. There's like a lot of really really good horses in there. So I think Best Pals, you know, eight to five. What's his name is like uh, light lights, like five to two Olympia, whatever. And free spirits, joy, this stupid local horse that happened to have Calvin Morell on him is 30 to one. Okay. And as soon as the gate opens, Calvin Morell just brings the horse to the rail. Okay. All these other horses just kind of wide fan wide out. And Burrell just like took it to all these outsiders and just stuck it to them and won by like four lengths, I think at 30 to one. And he basically got carried off the freaking or off the track, you know, and it was, it was awesome. Now there's even a race, the free spirits joy, you know, went out there. That was one of my great memories. So, so here, here's, so I'm going to lead into the Churchill card with this question based on part of our conversation about edge and things like that. Um, do you feel that, the that a day or let's say a combination of days like the oaks and the derby breeders cup days like that do you feel is that those types of cards have more of an edge for you for for like us less of an edge or it doesn't matter well i think it's uh, much much more of an edge um, because that? it's just because there's more I, I'm not, I hate to, well, it's more dumb money is going into the pools. There's yeah. more uh, non-informed money. Yep. It's more money that people who think they can read a racing form, you know, yep. look at it and, and they say, oh, this horse has the highest speed figure. So yep. he, you know, and, and then there's a tendency also for those folks to bet jockeys and trainers and, um, and certainly a huge bias for recency. So, you know, a horse that won its last race by eight lengths or something. Is going to take so much more money um, than you know than 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 he than he or she would normally take. So the, those are the days that you know you want to be in there gambling. Yeah. Uh, you may not you may not win, um, you know, because the public may be right. But there are there are just so many overlays on horses that there shouldn't be. Um, yeah. And so those are the days that you want to get in there and really gamble it up. Um, you know, and I, and I think I talk about this in in DFS right when they talk about different sports. I always think about this is, is if they, if uh, where's the biggest edge is, is the biggest edge in, in football or is the biggest edge in say, you know, like, uh, uh, like showdown legal legends, you know what I mean? That, that where there's a total fringe thing, like you, like on the one hand, you might make the argument that, that you can find a better edge at legal legends. If you, if you have one, but then again, like the people that are kind of competing in there might be kind of sharper than the average person is going to show up on a Sunday. What, what's, what's cool about this, type of card from from you from everybody else's perspective that's listening to us is that what's awesome is is that we're going to have a big edge here and number two nothing that you can do is going to affect our price you know what i mean because there's billions right. in the well, pool in this thing so and that's one of the things that i always hesitate when i want to do horse racing content why do i want to give away my freaking my my goal stream picks on a freaking tuesday 
when 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 if someone if anybody bets like two hundred dollars, I'm going to go from three to one to five to two or something like that. But on a day like this, I have no problem giving anything away, even for free, because it nobody's nobody. There's no amount out there that's listening to us that can bet enough to affect our price today. That's right. So I mean, these are the days where you just got to get in, you know, and just and just gamble it up because. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, there, there's going to be edges all over, the, you know, maybe instead of one or two, you know, there'll, there'll be six or seven or six or eight horses that are just like unbelievable prices that, that you think they shouldn't be. And that's where you, that's how you make money. If you're making money in, in almost any gambling sport is like, where, where's the value? This horse you think should be three to one, four to one is 10 to one, right? Yeah. Well, if you're right, you know, if your handicap is right, you know, in the long run, you're going to win. And that, and that's, that these situations present themselves on days like this um, or days like in the next two days, just much more frequently than they would on, on a regular day. So this is, so this is what we're going to do. And these are the, these are normal disclaimers, right. To everybody, right. I would not bet anything before five minutes to post. Okay. For openers. Look, if you have to go out, whatever, it's a little different than during, in, in these Churchill races. You'd, do, you'd be a little better. Okay. You maybe 15 minutes. But everything that we say is going to be odds based. Like if I say something looks really good at eight to one, these six to five, you probably shouldn't bet it. Right. And, 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 you know, this is a day ahead of time. I'm in, I'm in full, you know, Michael Baychuk mode where we're giving out picks like two days in some days, two days ahead, ahead of time. So, so, that, so that's, that's one thing. The other thing is, is that, you know, we're going to eat, we haven't talked about the card at all, just like Bobby and everyone don't talk about it all. So it's possible that I like something that he hates, probably he hates something I like or whatever. That's totally, totally chill, totally cool. And and the thing is, is that some of the things that he might say to justify a pick is something I have no interest in, right? Because I just handicap maybe in a different way. Some of the things, and I will sometimes like handicap a race say, listen, I just kind of like the six. Uh, I really can't get into all of it. It's a lot of data stuff and whatever. And they'll be like, huh? Okay, fine. And 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 then and then Michael have a really, you know, he'll 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 bring a much more qualitative uh approach to things. Like he'll probably he probably knows more about these horses and more about the breeding and most than I do. So so it's like anything else. Uh, it's like I talk about whether you're betting uh stocks, whether you're betting whatever, it's your job, everybody else's job to filter through the content and you figure out what what you want to bet on. But I will just say at least that that. B, listen, there's so many great values in these next two days. I'd be a stickler for it. You know, like, like I, I would, I know it's hard not to bet every race, but there are some races where if you don't like anything, if something's not that great, just I would pass. And that's, that's, that's kind of my, my view. Um, so, okay. You want to, let's, 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 let's just go. So um, this is going to be the first card. So it's going to be Friday and we're leave, then we're going to talk about Saturday. Um, I'll just go race by race and ask if you like anything, if you don't like anything. Cause I, I really, in two two days of racing here, and again, I want to err on the side of giving stuff out. I think there's only one race that I that I that I don't have anything. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so we'll see. Um, what, what do you like in the first race uh, tomorrow? So this is one. Of, I would say this, this is probably one of my best. You know, hopefully, I'm going to get some value on this horse, but this is one of my oh, best please, places. Of please, please let it be so, mine too. Oh, let's go. It's probably not because it's okay. too short of a price. But okay. I really the, the three idiomatic. Okay. Um, it was highly impressive in 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 the last race, uh, and she's only run, she's only run one race. And I'll say part of the edge, you know, that I think I have now over other folks is just being able to watch a race and just seeing how a horse won or lost. So it's trip based because that's just not readily available to people. Um, there are some services that offer you know trip handicapping but you know just my own eyes so i'm going to trust my eyes here and unfortunately you know this horse may be the favorite the three idiomatic but um i mean this horse just she really looks like she could be something extremely special um and I, i'm hoping against hope that she ends up at four to one uh in her morning line price the other horse i'll just mention real quick who i really like uh underneath maybe is fanny and freddie is uh, and I'll mention a lot of Al Stahl horses today because I love him and he's a really oh, good. Trainer. I remember when he first started Al Stahl Jr. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. was joking, he, he wins stall the races. That's right. And this is this is this is this horse is uh, she, she's very game, um, and she has some talent, but again, she's the favorite, so I wouldn't have any interest at uh, three to one. But 
you know, I, I would be single and idiomatic and like pick fives and pick fours to start off or pick five to start right, off. Just, just uh, to be, just to, just to be a pain in the ass. Um, what, what, what odds would you, would you not bet it? Well, I'm going to single in the pick five at any okay. number. Um, but okay. I probably wouldn't be a player at under seven to two. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but as he's kind of alluding to, I mean, think about this as part of daily fantasy sports, like, just because idiomatic, for example, let's say he might be chalk, let's say whatever. I mean, he's singling him in the pick five, which, you know, I imagine that there's going to be extra value in, in, in these other races. So likewise, in a, in a daily fantasy lineup, just because you like one bit of chalk doesn't mean you should throw it out, you know, because as long as you, you know, as long as there's total value in your lineup, just like just as if there's total value in that pick five, that even if idiomatic, it just it even, go, even goes off six to five or whatever it is. I mean, you probably can make up for that kind of, probably bad value there with you know probably most likely winner in your opinion that's it'll go go through the other and now i'll i'll stop i'll stop him in a second because he mentioned trip handicapping his ability to watch the races as i kind of alluded to earlier that was that was where i cut my teeth okay like in new orleans i mean i kept my little notebook and then this was even before they had they had replays you know you couldn't even get replays I mean, I went right. to California, they had the replay and they, you could request a replay, you literally pick up the phone at the track. I want race to <laughs> March 29th. You think about this, right? Like I'm lying yeah. whatever. And I was literally the only one at the replay booth the whole day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just constantly compiling notes and the ability, and listen, you know, the ability to actually see the horse, it's kind of like, you know, the difference between me and Bobby in, 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 in DFS analysis, the ability to actually know the players you know, backwards and forwards means a lot. Just because you can't quantify it per se doesn't mean it doesn't have value. You know, I just can't, you know, do it. And, and unfortunately, like I said, like when I use the sheets, it got me very lazy because what happens is when I use the sheets, it's completely data driven. I just go by numbers. I could care less who the jockey is. I could care less what the horse looked like because I'm, you know, trying to look like seven tracks in a row, you know, at a time where I don't know any of these freaking horses, right? So it's just kind of a time saver. So admittedly, it's just not kind of the smartest thing to just do it that way, but that's just kind of the piece that I've made. So with that said, um, what, <laughs> one of my best bets on the day is actually the seven, the scratch cat at 15 to one. Um, if you get him, I think at over 10 to one, I think it's really, really strong. So if you want to like kind of mix match, you know, disciplines, Hey, there's nothing, certainly nothing wrong with playing idiomatic on top of scratch cat just for fun, you know, and see, and, and see kind of what happens. But, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I actually, myself, uh, regard all the others as kind of, as kind of equal. So, uh, we got two different ideas for you. You could try idiomatic, you could try scratch cat, you could try them both and it gets you off to a, to a good start. What do you think about it? Yeah. Again? Are, are you using, are you, you're about your sheet space still on? on yeah, on 100 percent. Yeah. I don't know any, I, I don't know anybody. I mean, I, I'm just still, I'm still <laughs> sure, literally just a hundred percent. Someone sent me the sheets for the first time uh, uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday. And I, I told, and I started out using sheets. Um, you know, I thought that was because again, that was just an edge over what everybody right. else was using. Right. And, and then I, I transitioned to thoroughgraph and then this, it's just a, and then it just seems like to me, Sheets is that that information is just too, it's too available and it just drives, you think, you would think, everybody you, has you, it. You, you would think so, but then, but then what happens is, is then you start seeing that there are certain tracks that are kind of Sheets tracks where, where, where they just take a lot of Sheets money and just kind mm -hmm. of avoid them. And there's certain, so, so, and, and that's like it's anything Laurel, else. Laurel used to be one of those tracks. Laurel yeah. to me was, uh, yeah. if, back when I was playing like heavy, you know, years ago laurel man if you saw something at laurel because i lived in dc for a while and i would go i would get the sheets you know on, on saturdays go out there and it's like damn i mean this is this whole 12 to be, one morning you know? 12 to one morning line it's going up seven to five what the hell's going on yeah 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 interesting what do we got second race all right second race pull it back up here i, I would i would i would just caution people um tomorrow and it, it looks like it's going to rain a lot. Oh, good, good um, info. Okay. So I'm going to, I've kind of stayed away from the turf racing, but the second is not a turf. So I like two different horses here because this trainer um, gets, he's getting a lot, he gets a lot of winners. Um, he preps his horses in Florida, then comes into Kentucky around this time and wins, you know, tends to win more races than he would normally win on lunch or the year. And so I'm looking at the nine high resolution at 20 to one. 
That's George Arnold. But the one that I really favor is the three. She's Keen, who had a who had a has only run once. Both of them have only run, I think, one time. Um, but he, he's he she's worked very well over the last couple workouts, which means you know he's kind of cranking her up and had a really good closing kick. So I just think she's keen at, at the price is probably going to be the, the place that I'm going to, if I'm betting the race, you know, straight, that's, that's where I'm going to go. But the other arm horse, uh, high resolution, the nine would be another one I would include. Um, George, Arnold, George Arnold used, yeah. used to be, and these are like just things I remember from like, from like my, my, my youth. I remember George Arnold used to be good with Phillies. Uh, I, I don't know if that's still the case. Um, and made in Phillies. I, again, this, this is like 30, I mean, this is like a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, okay, so uh, my view on this race, and so I presume, listen, like, follow along with his his ideas, right? So so you singling idiomatic, idiomatic, then you can kind of spread out a little bit, take some shots with some of those long shots that, that he brought up. I'm, I'm going to throw another one in there uh, just for fun. The, the only issue with this horse is that he's spotting seven pounds to the field, and that would be uh, South Georgia, so I would throw 20 to one uh, South Georgia into the underdog pool here. And, and um, I actually think the favorites are, are, are kind of, are pretty good here. The, uh, the 10 and the 11, Miss Redden and Benting. Um, I, I, so, so if it were me, um, I would include South Georgia in the underdog pool. And again, depending on what you did in the pick five, you know what I mean? Like you played idiomatic play. So, okay. If you played idiomatic, I probably wouldn't use with Miss Redden and Benting. OK, I, I just, I, you know, they're, they're, they're OK favorites, but I would not go, go chalk over chalk. But if he did use his idiomatic, I definitely would go with his with his other long shots, you know. Um, and I, I would probably throw my my uh, my hoobie in there also. Now, seven seven pounds is, is, is a pain in the ass. OK, that, that's that's the way the way sheet theory works. That's worth like a, almost like a full length and a half. Um, yeah. And that's kind of rough. Um, but uh Hey, 20 to one, uh, maybe, maybe I get lucky. So, so that's where I'm at in the second race. Um, third race, what do you got? The third race could possibly stay on the turf. Cause I mean, I'm not sure when the oh, race so this is one of the turf races. Okay. It's a turf. So I didn't really look, you know, too deeply, but, uh, it looked very, it's a short turf field, which is not the, 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 the best scenarios. You know, you like a lot of horses. Um, I mean, it just looks like, chalk to me it looks like q qf 75 with joel rosario okay. is going to go to the front and maybe not be challenged um there's just not a lot of speed in here and the turf at churchill just eyeballing over the first couple of days which is brand new turf has tended to favor uh some early speed so you know unfortunately it's it's a it's a it's it's a coupled entry so you're going to get really screwed on the price um, but this may be another place where I, I would, I would single, uh, and it's going to be a terrible, terrible price on the, on the one, but this might be just like for those out there, Hey, this is a pass race, you know, just, just watch it and see what I, happens. I think, I think I agree. Um, the, the, you know, my favorites in the race are very, are pretty chalky as well. Um, and that would be the three and the eight, but I, I, I agree with, with, with you. I think this is a race where you could probably not take any new stands, you know, like, listen, if you're still hope, just hope to be still alive from previous races, you know, I wouldn't start anything up new here unless you really, really like something coming up. Uh, I, 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 uh, I agree with that. And one thing that he had mentioned is, you know, is that you know, it's likely that a horse gets to the front and stuff you know, that, that type of, of, of analysis is kind of like race analysis, you know, that the, the theory being that, that it's not enough to know which horse is kind of ready to go. The actual style of the race has to favor him you know that that if the horse is used to you know if listen the horses are not just data points horses are, are breathing animals and some of them just are more prone whether it be because their physical makeup or whatever to just be you know to be quick out of the gate and be near the front of the leap near the front of the pack and the the idea is that if he's going to have facing a lot of other people a lot of other horses challenging him makes that makes that horse there's chances kind of difficult. Think of even like track races, you know, where, or cycling races where you have one guy at the front that's feeling all this kind of pressure, you know, it's just not really his style. And then on the other hand, you know, if there is a horse or, or a track person or whatever that could, that's used to being on the lead and no one's going to go with them and you can be a little more rested, not only does that make him more likely for him to win, 
but it also it, you know, the correlate of that correlation of that is is that if you have a, a, a kind of a chalky closer it's very difficult for that closer to close into a, a situation like that so you might get some extra value and, and that type of race analysis is again something that just being a pure sheets player just denies me. It, it deprives me of <laughs> and it. It does. It, it deprives me of, of that, of, of, of extra edge that I could have by, by knowing that, you know, and, and like I said, when I was really just being hardcore doing profession, I would combine it all, you know, I have the sheets, I'd have the, 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 the trips, I'd have the horse or whatever it is, but that, but that type of knowledge is, 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 is pretty, is pretty important. Um, fourth race. Um, you like, you like uh, Juju coming off the layoff or what, what do you like here? I mean, I'm, I'm, this is a race where I think I'm going to take a pretty big shot uh, because I know, yeah, Juju is even money. You know, that's that's a huge morning line favorite, ran against. It's going to be less. Probably. It's going to be less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, this is another place where I'm going to single. Um, we got? And I'm going to single the eight, Ilo, Ilio okay. Gami. Okay. Um, you know, she, again, it's that George Arnold Philly thing again, but she gets Lasix, um, which she has not, it's a, that's a bleeder drug stops horses from bleeding into their, their lungs and her two best races ever were on Lasix around this time of the year, last year. Um, she had a terrible, terrible trip last time. I'd say terrible, but it just looked like a 1000% prep race for this race right here. Jockey stays, she's two out of three in the money, you know, a Churchill, and I think the, the biggest part of it is I think she's four to one morning line, but this horse is going to be, I think this horse will be six, seven to one, you know, and I just think three to one is probably more fair. So I'm just going to be getting a pretty big overlay here and I'll take a shot against Juju's map who, you know, I mean, should win the race. I mean, but, you know, coming off a layoff three-year-old Philly, especially, you know, you just, you're, you're kind of, it's just too short of a price to take, so, and I'm so, willing so, to go so, ahead so give and single here. So, so give everybody a quick, a quick lesson in like the sheets. Right? I'm not even going to get into it, but but essentially, the lower the number, the better, right? So with the horse that we were, we were, we we just spoke about Juju's map. So you'll see, as a two year old, it had a 17 to start, then a 14, then a pair of 12 minuses, which are really really strong races for a two year old, and now it's coming off the layoff. So you're trying to predict like what it's what it might run. So you could you could make the case that. It's not ready to run and maybe only run a 14. You can make the case developed and run in a 10 or a 12. So it's somewhere, it's somewhere in there. But like compare that to say Ilogami. So Ilogami had a couple of 14s at three, a couple of 14s here. And then as he mentioned, right, you kind of like put the story together in the numbers. It took a layoff and maybe this was a prep race leading into this one. So it only ran a 19, but it just kind of looks like kind of an aberration, you know, you know, it kind of it feels like a prep race. So so even if it runs back to his other numbers of a 14, it's very, very legitimate contender to, to someone like Ilagumi who might not even be ready to run at all. So, 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 you know, I, I agree with that assessment that if you give me one, you know, Juju's map, it's at, at six to at three to five, you know, and the other one, at, at, if it drifts up to five, six to one. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I want to throw one other in there just, just for, just for fun. Um, at a, at a zillion one, and that would be compelling smile. There's another one off a layoff, so you know you're getting a lot of variance in here. But just based on numbers, you'll see that it's got an 11 last year. It's got a couple of 14s. It's got a 13 or whatever it is. So it's probably a little bit like a little bit weaker, okay. But if you really get everything that you want, and not only do you get you know Juju's map not ready to run and Ilogami not ready to run, then maybe him at 15 to one. But the more I'm thinking about it, I think I like the Ilugami. Not only, I, I don't know, if, I didn't even know he's getting laced for the first time, but it's also blinkers on for Ilugami. Um, and, and basically what I've learned is that pretty much any change is good. You know what I mean? Like, yep. like yep. any change creates variance and, and variance is usually good in horse racing, especially when you're not betting the favorite. So um yeah, I, I like I I I definitely prefer Ilagami over Juju at the price. Um, all right, fifth race. So fifth is we're still on the turf here. I mean, again, it just seems like she's I'll, every one of these races has like this favorite they were trying to beat. And I, my, my my you know my, my memory is saying <laughs> that's really hard to do beating a favorite every race. But you got a horse in here that's undefeated. Uh, by Chad Brown, you know, Bleecker Street, the eight. And, you know, it's going to be hard to, hard, hard to beat. I mean, just hard to beat. 
But if you're looking for a price, uh, I mean, this horse, she can't sing. I know it's a fairgrounds horse and I'm, I'm a homer, but man, she has really gotten good over her last two races. Um, one race, two, two back, she won at 24 to one. Uh, the last race, she won a stakes race at nine to one. And she just, I mean, she just game and, and she's getting some weight here. Um, I really like Chris Block, the trainer. So, I mean, I'm thinking this horse might be 12 to one. So you might get more than your eight to one morning line. Um, I think she fits on, on numbers. You know, she certainly passes my eye test uh, that as she got, you know, a little older, that, that obviously had some issues, but, you know, a little bit longer going around two turns. She was great last time out and she's going to be the value. Whether she can beat, you know, the Peter Brandt, uh, Chad Brown horse, I'm not sure. Okay, so we'll have some fun for those of you who have been following along. So listen, I'm not going to tell you guys what to do, but I will just say this. Right, so let's look at Bleecker Street, all right? Let's presume you know nothing, and let's presume that we're just looking at numbers, like, like idiot sheets, right? So Bleecker Street's got <laughs> a 12, and it's got an 11, and it's going to be 6 to 5. Okay. So let, let me just – I'll start from the outside back. Past the plate is literally just as good, if not better, okay, with 11s, okay? That's for openers. Next, you have Curly Ruth. I don't even know what her price is, but she's maybe one length worse, if that. You have Hendy Woods, who, with the exception of the 14 where she bled, she's got an 8 and a 10 last week, last year. You got Lake Lucerne, a little, maybe a little bit worse. She can't sing literally just as good with the 11. Mona Stella at 30 to one, I have as the most <laughs> likely winner in the race. <laughs> right? So, so, yeah. so with a 10. Um, so uh, look, what can I tell you? That's just, that's just what I'm seeing. So I'm playing Mona Stella. Um, and not to mention that Bleecker Street gives up two pounds. So uh, Bleecker Street's going to probably be on zero of my tickets. So that, that's kind of what I'm doing. And this is, one of those things where I'm just kind of go with what with, with, with what I see. So, um, you guys want to play pretty much any horse in this race, aside from the favorite, you get my blessing. And Mona Stella for me, 31. I really, really hope this stays on the turf. Okay, I really do. Anyway, um, race six, what do you got? I, I didn't I didn't really, I mean, I couldn't hardly get past uh you know, Pauline's pearl here, but, but, but if I'm looking for uh, a long shot or longer shot, um, I did, you know, I think temper time, again, these horses that Dale Romans, you know, he, he trains in Florida, but, but, you know, he, he really excels in Kentucky. His horses have been running uh, much better than what they have done over the past couple, you know, months. So his horses are running better. And sometimes barns, as you said, get, get a little bit hot. Um, I think that's the long shot play. Um, you got the horse at one. I guess she won the Oaks. Then she's won, she won this race last year. She dares the devil. Brad Cox is probably outside of Bob Baffert now, probably the, you know, the number one stakes trainer on dirt um, in the country. So a, a big, you know, a big, big favorite, but um I know my money will be on pro if I'm playing the race, I'll probably be on temper time um, to, to upset this race, but the favorites here also look very, very solid. Yeah. I'm, I, you know what? We're at a race where I'm, I'm with you. So, so I, I don't like she's, she shared, she dares the devil at all. I definitely think that Pauline's Pearl is the better of the two favorites um, by a decent amount. And I, I am totally in agreement that if you want to try to beat it, um, you could play temper time. I do like that a lot. Um, temper time, even battle bling a little bit. But I think the key to this, as, as we both kind of alluded to, was that I don't think she shares the devil is particularly, particularly strong at that price. So I think that if you want to play something short, I think Pauline's Pearl is totally legit. Um, and if you want to play something long, I think temper time. So I completely agree with Michael on that. So you, you know how it is. I, when Michael, I totally both agree with it. Probably neither of them has <laughs> any chance to win at all. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, what do you think about the seventh race? I think that Olympia is going to have it all his own way. Um, and at a short price, is going to be very difficult to beat. I don't see this is one of those races, you know, where we talked about uh, speed being, 
you know, just speed being so big of a factor if you're the only horse that really wants to go to the front. And I, I just, I can't find another horse that's going to be close enough to threaten Olympiad, unfortunately, at, at, a, at a short number. Uh, and, you know, it just, it's just very hard to get past Olympiad here. If I'm, if I'm playing, you know, something else, Wayburn, the two is going to be the one I'm playing underneath or maybe including in, in multi-race wagers just because I love when, you know, a horse um, changes trainers, uh, pops up a big number. You know, sometimes just a change of barn helps, and Wayburn ran his best race ever as a four-year-old last time out, but can run long because he's run against Mandaloon, only lost by a neck. Um, so the horse has some quality. Um, and so that, that would be the – if you're just playing the race straight up, you know, the two is clearly the one. For me, anyway, Olympiad looks very tough to beat there. I think that Olympiad is a lock. Uh, <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. And that was before I was even, I can consider, like I said, I couldn't consider the speed stuff. And if you're telling me that that's the case also, I mean, I'm not beating that. Uh, so, so I'm either passing the race or I'll, I'll single that, you know what I mean? In, in whatever else I'm doing. Uh, that sounds good enough to me. Um, race eight. Uh, what do you like here? It's another turfer, um, you uh, know, so. One, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm afraid that some of these are going to get you know taken off. Um, I hope not. Me too. But you 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 know just depending on on what the how much it rains and um in the no, morning. By the way, everybody it, everybody check the check the Discord. If it comes off the turf, maybe if we have time, I'll I'll kind of post like updated stuff if it goes on the dirt or something like that. Or if it's like if it's super sloppy, that requires a little more massaging of the of the of the selection of the handicapping all Yeah, no, um, right, yeah. But so so we'll have, to, we'll have to get back to you on that kind of stuff. You know, as usual, you know, I think she's, the turf races are usually more competitive than dirt. You know, the, the horses kind of group themselves together, and they're also, you know, sometimes, you know, those horses tend to run their race more often than run an off race. So sometimes you can find, you know, trip, trip horses there that, you know, look a little bit slower but you know you think might be a little bit better and this is one of those cases for me in the, the nine new year's eve who i would put probably as one of my top three plays of the day horse just wants is very very competitive wants to win um you can he's gotten better in every race uh brendan walsh the trainer is really good and he gets i guess he would get kind of what you would think a jockey upgrade from uh, adam Bacheza to louis saez and this horse might be 15 20 to 1 um tomorrow because he's 12 to 1 morning line and i mean she and she should probably in my book be around six sixes so this would be a value play um without question the nine new year's eve so you can you can add uh an, um, one that i have in this race as a bomb as well so i like this six an agent mistake at 15 to 1 so you want to use an agent mistake and new year's eve now you're you know you could use those as, as the at the bottom end of maybe daily doubles with that with that uh, of course that that nine to five shot in race seven, um, and uh, I definitely like that. The other ones I think are okay. I think knee ship is okay. Favorite Dulce Gel is okay. Spice is just okay. But I'm 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 down for a long shot here. So so agent mistake would be for me and uh, and Michael likes uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, how about race nine? So this is, you know, this is a race where it just looks like to me, I know it's a sprint, uh, seven furlongs, but that's a long run down the backstretch. It sure looks like there's just a lot of horses that want to go to the front, right? And so, as you said, you know, it's, it's optimal when there's only one or two that want to go, um, but it's, it's also non-optimal when there's a bunch of them that just want to get to the front. And once they're challenged, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. So... Again, I'm going to take a, a, a flyer here on the one sweet as pie, um, who, you know, looks to be a better sprinter. They tried her going around, you know, well, long turn and then two turns at the fairgrounds and she just didn't really like it, but she's undefeated sprinting. Um, she gets Lasix. She got Lasix last time, not this time, but she is going to be way in the back. Luis Saez is undefeated on her. It's Todd Pletcher going to have a great ground saving trip. 
I think Swedish pie is a, is a big, big value play at anything over eight to one, I would say. So if I was, if I was going to be serious about horse racing again, or if you were going to be serious about horse race betting again, the, the rhetorical question, it's not even rhetorical that I would ask if, when you say things like, um, you know, this, this horse is going to be, you know, get a lone lead. So it's got a better chance, or this horse is going to have a, you know, a good trip ahead of him. So he's got a good chance. My, my natural question would be how much of that is, is, is handicapped? You know, how much of that is factored in the price? You know, how much does the public, you know, factor that in and even ruin the price on stuff like that? It's a rhetorical question, but it, but it, but it's an actual question. You know what I mean? That, that it's kind of hard to know. I mean, I think, I think instinctively, you know, like you say, the sharper, the sharper, the people, right. The, the, the sharper the people, the, the more likely that is to be factored in, right, I, I imagine. But I would also say that, that if you're going to handicap that way, which is really sharp to do, going back to my, my other question about what, which, which tracks might be sheets tracks, like if, if you, going back to let's say you, you knew stuff like that and you were back at Laurel back in the day where Laurel was a total sheet track that they would just pound these sheet horses, whatever, and the sheet players would never, never give a crap, you know, about, about trips or, or speed or whatever it is. You could get big edges over sheet players by doing by playing into those pools. Where if there was another track where maybe it was more inclined to, you know, or people were sharper about about that type of analysis, maybe you know, maybe maybe they would be kind of undervalued because everybody knows that it's going to be a big speed favoring track or a, you know big speed duel or whatever it is. Um, I don't know the answer, but um, the uh, course I would add here. Uh, is actually not really. I really don't like too much here. So I'm I'm gonna I'll I'll let you go with your sweetest pie. Um, no, and I, I mean look, that horse is is slower than the rest, right? And and look, if a horse like uh, Matareya, the what number is Matareya? Eight. Uh, yeah. So the morning line on that one is five to two, but she's she she is like way faster than anybody else. Uh, if, if that horse would get would be five to two or three to one. To me, that would be value because I think this horse should be eight to five. I mean, so it goes in, you know, both ways, kind of. I just, it's just hard for me to take a horse, to bet a horse that's five to two. But this horse is just, I mean, she, she's much faster, but I just expect the public to, to bet her like, she, like she's okay. much faster. That's all. Um, tenth race. Tenth race. Another turf, which I didn't spend a lot of time tenth on. Tenth race sprint actually yeah yeah um i i'm, I'm a sucker for th this horse is going to get my money even though uh, i don't know he he hadn't run a, a good race in quite a while but uh i know his trainer um and this horse has won me some money in the past Th these races i'll also say these five and a half tur turf sprints they're almost all about can the horse work out a trip Yep. Because, you know, this is a full field, yep. um, you know, you, you, you don't have a lot of time to, to correct a mistake because these horses are the, the time of the race is a minute, minute, five seconds. So you got to You better, you know, you better get some odds, because if your horse gets in trouble, you're, you're basically screwed. I think Diamond Oops has one more, you know, really good race that they've, they've kept this horse in training. Uh, and so I just at, at the price with. You know, I just think I'm hopeful. He ran, I think, in this race last year and ran fourth at four to one. Um, you know, he's run kind of the same races times that he did that year, last year, four to one. But this year he's going to be 15 to one, you know. So that's the value for me coming from behind with a, with a really good jockey. Diamond Oops is the value. All right. So here we go. We'll do we'll do a sheet analysis for this one. Again, totally primitive. We're not talking about patterns or anything like that. We're just going to go fastest number win. Right. So we're going to go from the bottom up and we're going to just look at some of these numbers. This is everybody's like first, first, first lesson in chief. So what makes a man run has some tens last year. So we haven't looked at anybody else. So let's let's say tens is what you have to be for now. Johnny Unleashed has a 10 in its last race. So pretty even. Just Might has a nine and 11. So all pretty even. Uh, arrest me red an 11 pretty good everybody's the same i must wish somebody would stand out Pyron 11 gear jockey a nine so close enough like maybe slightly better but not really diamond oops 11 as an eight last year very very similar 
Looks like we're not going to have anybody to bet. Brand, not bad. Brand has an eight uh, among a couple of 12s. Um, so that's really not bad. So it looks like you're going to be bored here. Cowan, nothing, a 12 and a 14. And who's left here? Chasing already a 13. Caravelle, like a 13. The Lear Jet, like a 14. And look at Gregorian Chant with a six. Okay. <laughs> so all I'll say is not only does he have this the one six, but he's got a couple of sixes last year also. The only thing that concerns me is this. I'm kind of guessing that he's a closer um, you know, without even looking at the racing form because he's definitely a closer. Because this V here, by the way, for sheets players, that means wide. Um, and a big V means very wide. And you see a bunch of V's in his, uh, in his profile here. So it makes it very, very difficult to number. Look, it's difficult, difficult to be wide in the first place. But if you start by getting pinned down at the rail and all these horses crossing over you, then you got to like <laughs> take a right-hand turn and either sweep six wide where, what we say? We're losing maybe six lengths that way. Or just kind of suck along and hope the Calvin Burrell Red Sea parts for you, like mine that bird. You know what I mean? Like just like, and it's kind of tough to win that way. I'm just like, as you were saying, I mean, you got a five furlong sprint. It's not like a mile and an eighth race where you can have time to kind of, you know, maneuver it around. I mean, if you get if you get checked out of a five furlong race, it's all over. Okay, so so this is one of those things where on numbers, Gregorian Chant for me is a stone log, but in reality. It's going to be really difficult for him to win. Um, so I'm probably going to do it just because I'm a sucker for that. But uh, but that that's that that's that's the way I that's the way at least I analyze races. Um, and again, if you got if you got a horse that's from the rail in a 13 horse field that's not going to get near the front, and you got to navigate all these horses, especially with one turn to do it, it's not easy. <laughs> I like that. I like that horse. I think the rail, you know, it's here's the thing. It's either it's all or nothing. It's either yep. going to be a great draw for him or it's going to yep. be a horrible draw. Right. Yep. But, you know, at, at 10 to one, you you know, you, you, you're you willing to take that shot at, yep. at three to one. You, you just you can't do it. I mean, you can't you can't take that gamble, but you can gamble on that one. All right, the Kentucky Oaks, the Lawn Jeans Kentucky Oaks, which is going to finish uh, everybody's pick six, going to finish everybody's pick five. It's going to finish everybody's whatever. Um, you have a, you got, looks like you have a five to two shot, a seven to two shot, a four to one shot, pretty full field. Who do you like here? Okay. So I'm going to preface this by saying, you know, um, I'm a sucker for, for horse, for, for, for changes, just like you said, right? I think anytime something has changed on a horse, it's got to be positive EV. I, I just, I, you know, blinkers, Lasix maybe sometimes a jockey, but also trainers. Yeah. And so the 13 horse, Shahama, okay. is getting a new trainer, and not only a new trainer, but a Hall of Fame trainer, uh, Todd Pletcher. And if you just, I'm looking at some numbers here, his horses that have the first start with Todd Pletcher are 27% winners. That's a good thing. Second good thing is, um, it's going to likely be sloppy track and the horses by Munnings, not the artists, but the sire. Yeah. Um, and Munnings horses are very, very, they move up pretty good on when it's a wet track. Oh, okay. That's good. And the other thing is, according to workout people that I just kind of, that I follow either on Twitter or no, there are very few horses at Churchill Downs in these two big races that are training better or looking better than the Shahama. And so all of those things for me, because I don't know that there's a standout. So, so I'm kind of, you know, like, okay, if, if I had to pick one of the top four, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be taking the worst of it anyway, because they're kind of all equal to me. I'm looking for this, you know, for the bomber. Um, and, and you're getting a great rider change to, to a positive. There's just too many changes that, you know, got to create some sort of positive EV here. And so Shaham is going to be 20 something to one. And that's going to be my, my, my buster, my bomber, you know, underneath and, and also to, 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 to win. Cause I think it's going to be a, you know, again, a good positive EV play. 
Well, uh, I, I will say this. Um, I, it doesn't look that great on sheets, but I will say this. For, for every Michael Baychok who wants to, to sue for losses betting against Bob Baffert, there's probably 7,000 people in New York that want to sue betting against Todd Fletcher, okay? As he, and, 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 and Gulfstream, I mean, that guy, I don't know what, I, listen, I'm, I don't want to accuse anybody of anything, but all I'll say is this, what you said is accurate, is that Fletcher horses move up. I don't know why, I'm not going to speculate, but, 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 but Fletcher horses do move up. Um, this, is, this is what I like, this race. And again, I'm just gonna, this is another race I'm going to show the sheets for. So let's let's take a look at the at the favorites here. So you have Kathleen O with a seven. We're gonna look at that one, just top top number, and we're gonna see if anybody can beat a seven. Uh, Desert Dawn, no, can't can't beat a 10, 14, Echo Zulu with an eleven, Yuguri with a twelve, God Sapphire with a ten. So Ness could could beat a seven, and Ness is like the other favorite. So unless there's anybody that's gonna beat this, here we go. You got a Hidden Connection that ran an eight, and a nine at two. And that's good enough for me at 20 to one. Okay. So, so that's what I'm going to do this race. And I got that in here. I'm kind of benefiting from being inside, you know, I got two turns to work out whatever I need. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to do this race. Um, and, um, and, and yeah. I'll say this sheets. I was between the, I mean, I'm using hidden connection everywhere. Like if I'm, that was my second horse um, okay. because it, my memory from reading sheets is that her sheet is that's a extremely positive that's sheet correct. for hidden connection that's because correct. she ran really fast as a two year old. That's correct. Might have, you know, and then she 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 exceeded that number yeah. by a little in her bit. second start yeah. just yeah. by a little bit. Yeah. And, and 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 oh by the way, <laughs> she only lost to the favorite likely favorite by a nose in the last race. So I mean, if you just look I mean, at it, all, all, right. right. If you just look at it on common sense perspective, yeah. you know, and by the way, she large Churchill down. So, I mean, I, I, I will amend my pick and say, I'm going to be equally uh, invested in hidden connection and Shahama because I can be, because they're both going to be probably 15, 20 to one. So you, you can be basically equally invested in both of them because you can spread around. So she, she's, she's a live, live play for me as well. So after the World Series of Poker ends, I always said to my horses, after they busted the main event or whatever it is, I, I, I always felt as though that whole summer, the best tournament to ever put people in was the tournament at Bellagio after the main event, right? Because <laughs> what you get is everybody on freaking tilt from like the whole summer and, and, and everybody plays literally the worst. I always felt as though, and this is not the same as the Oaks Day, but like the like the race after the Derby is like it's, it's like total total tilt fest, you know. But the thing is, is that is that most people just spend all their money on the on, the, on the, they don't really have much left to spend anyway, or they just kind of leave. So, um, but but what what do you do? You like anything from either of these last two races after the Oaks? Did you even look at those? I did look I, I i didn't i didn't really i do like something tomorrow after the the last at the uh you know okay. after in one of, but but i didn't i didn't really like anything in these last two races yeah i do I, I i have i have a couple so i like uh, in the 12th race i have the um the uh the seven tail of free a d chianti tail of freddie chianti oh goodness that's a long one um and then also if it gets in, I guess the 12 vaccine of hope. Um, and then 13, 13th race. I don't know. Do you have anything in race 13 or no? No. Okay. All right. So let's move on to, um, and then we'll put another, you know, like we'll note here in the, in the video. So let's go on, let's go on to Derby day, which is definitely between that and the breeders cup, the two most profitable days of the year, I believe. I would actually say Derby day is even more so. Um, just because it's actually more like people that know about racing, maybe go to Breeders Cup. People just, just want to wear hats and drink mint, mint juleps. Go to go to the Kentucky Derby. Okay, um, so let's uh, let let the, you know it's some. They don't have the Wasp Stakes anymore. That was always my favorite. Where they had all the two year olds. Mine too. No, the WHAS because I used to bring those horses from Delta Downs. Yeah, right? so my biggest cash is. Yeah, um, they don't have that anymore. Yeah. Uh, that was something to look forward to. Look at some of these, some of the names of these races. So the, so the funny side. Okay. So uh, race seven, uh, excuse me, race one, Derby Day. What do you like? I like the one quite a bit. Um, Ooh, I, I know, again, um, I, 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 you know, no, 
following Al Stahl, who's a friend of mine. Uh, so I, I kind of know, you know, his patterns and, or at least I think I know his patterns. He's very tight lipped. He won't tell me anything, but I know when the horse, you know, works fast, that there's something there, you know, and this horse. Oh, so he's a first time starter. So he's a first time starter. Right. Right. Okay. So, so that's another edge. I think that, you know, I have um, over regular players is that yeah. I'll tend to bet, especially in contests. Jeez, this is, you know, really an edge in contests. Players just won't want to bet on first time or won't want to pick a first time starter because they just it's there's too many unknowns to, to you know especially, for them especially, anyway. especially going somewhat long right yeah so I, I feel like if I'm picking a first time starter in a contest ninety percent of the people are usually not picking that horse you know uh, and they're never going to be short prices so. I know that this horse has got talent because he worked really fast in March at the fairgrounds out of the gate. And then I know that Al just kind of backed off on him because he got what he wanted. Um, he's going to be a long shot. He's going long, but he got a great draw. He's on the one hole. Um, I, I think this horse has, has, has a big, big, big chance to, to upset this first. So here's, uh, here's, so here's, first a question. Question. here's a question that I posed that to, to, everybody who bets first time starters and and people that bet first time starters know exactly what sentiment that I'm going to be creating here. So unleash the power is 12 to one morning line. Would you feel better if going to the post, he was five to one or 30 to one? No, I, I, I've lost that. I mean, I know that I've almost, I've passed on too many because he, he wasn't showing some sort of money, yeah. you know, and, and, and the horse cruises in at 25 to so especially tomorrow, I mean, it's Saturday, right? Like you said at the beginning, no amount of money is going to make any difference. I mean, if they're betting, if they, you know, Al and his right, group right. or whoever is betting, it ain't going to make no difference. Okay. Um, so, no, I want him to be, I want him to be, you know, twenty to one or whatever. I mean, yeah. What I'm referring to is, is there was this, there's this concept in in in, uh, in racing of, of of feeling comfortable if a horse is kind of like live. You know what I mean? Like that. It, 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 it quote unquote sharp money kind of appears to be betting on a horse, especially one with no information. You know, it's look, if, if the horse is getting bet down and it's showing sick workouts, then okay, fine. But, so, but we've just seen so much of, of these horses that first time starters, they show slow workouts, no breeding, and they're slammed and they just seem to always win. But, but I'm, I'm kind of with you is that on a day like this, if you like something like that, I mean, I just, just hope to get the biggest price possible. <laughs> um, I, it's funny because I just kind of think the favorites are rough here. I, I, I kind of like favorites. I like the seven to 10. Um, they just run, they run a number, like they're both running like tens. And, and, and I will say that it's really difficult to, to run a 10 as a three-year-old. And, and to, 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 to this point in the Derby, coming up to like, like horses are running sixes, you know, and, and, or may, maybe not even. So to be logical and um, I'll say this, to be logical and warrior Johnny here, if this one can do it, I mean, stall has got a freaking horse. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, okay. Let's, uh, let's move on to uh, race two. Okay. I think there was a horse I liked in here. Yeah. Um, I think this is kind of the pattern horse that we were talking about uh, in just a few minutes ago, the eight Osborne. Um, you know, he ran really fast as a two-year-old, didn't run quite as good in the races right after, but came back in his first race uh, about a month ago um, and kind of exceeded that number. So that to me is a very positive pattern because it just means that the horses, you know, developed from two to three and i mean i think he'll get overlooked again he's eight to one they got a lot of name horses in here trainers and jockeys and i think this horse is the fastest horse in the race so at eight to one i mean i'm sold all right so osborne again we haven't talked about this beforehand on um, any of these races osborne is literally a classic just awesome sheep play which, uh, which, uh, which, which Michael got to in, his, in, a, in a different way. Um, and, and just to kind of just show uh, the numbers, what he's kind of talking about, right? So it ran a 12 at two. And this was, now to even get even more technical, he ran the 12 kind of sprinting. Then he had sort of an off race going around, which is 14, but it's still a good number. 
And then it kind of came back running a route, like kind of like kind of a, a 19. And then its next race, it went back to sprinting and it ran a 12, which is Michael was kind of referring to just, just barely eclipsed the 12 and a half. He was running at two. This is an extremely strong line for a three-year-old to have, um, according to the sheets. And, and, and the only thing that's difficult is he might have a little bit too short rest, but I'm willing to overlook that. Um, uh, it's, it's also, you know, listen, uh, look at you, people can look at short rest different ways, you know, one to say, okay, it's good that he's short rest. That means he's sharp. Sometimes you, you need kind of a, kind of a rest off of a big performance, but the fact that he was able to put up a 12 last year means that this 12 now is really not, might not take as much out of him as, as let's say they let, we replace these numbers with like twenties, for example, and then it would run a 12. I would expect it to just kind of like have to work a while to come back to that. But here, because he's already shown the ability to do it, I, I, I agree with Mike completely. I think it's a, almost a standout. Um, the other one I would throw in, just kind of just if you want, is the, uh, is the five Ignitus. But to see the difference, right? So we're, we're, we're both, we're both talking, we're both horses kind of look like 12s, right? But Ignitus is, is, is much weaker, right? So, so you look at Ignitus, compare. It was running 17s and 16s at two compared to that other horse that was running 12s. And now it kind of like got through to, to a 12. It had an off race. It certainly is okay at a big long shot, but 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 Osborne is significantly. I, I think it's clearly the most likely winner in this race. So so I completely am on board with with for, with Michael in this one. Um, third race, uh, third race for me. I'll start with this one because I don't have any. Case. You go. Yeah. This is like a one pass that I have on like the whole two days. So I got nothing. <laughs> Got nothing. Uh, well, I guess that puts the, the, the onus on me. Uh, I don't really like anything. Um, I mean, I think I'll, I'd probably end up just on the pattern, and I'm looking at thoroughgraph mostly pattern wise on talking book. Uh, it just looks like he, she, he or she is a really good improving pattern. Has a weird, you know, ran twice as three year old, twice as a four year old, twice as a five year old. Now, this is the first time that they're getting a third race out of this horse. So, I would assume that, you know, the horse is doing well and he's certainly fast, faster. So, she is. Uh, it's not going to get much of a price, but that's where I think that's where I'm going to go. Um, fourth race. Uh, what do you like here? Fourth race. I got to pull. Look over here. Nothing. You go first, and then yeah. So I got, I got, um, I oh, got, yeah, three, I, like I have three yeah. horses here, which which yeah. I think are worth it. Um, McLaren Vale's okay at nine and two, but 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 the two long shots that I kind of like here, or I like the seven curly tail. Wow, John Court, that's another one back from the <laughs> back from the early days, uh, Louisiana Downs. John yeah, Court. John Court, and then I don't even know who this guy is, but I like the nine Gunfighter. At twenty to one with uh, with somebody, uh, Bashiza, Bashiza. I don't know who that is. But the biscuit. Uh, okay. The biscuit. Put the bis put Adam the biscuit in the basket. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. yeah. The biscuit. So I like those. I like those long shots in this race. I like uh, cover me up. Who I think just on on the uh, thoroughgraphs is is the fastest horse. Um, has also has a little bit of uh, wet track experience. Um, will be forwardly placed, gets our red RTs. And again, this is, you know, mostly price based. I mean, if this horse was three to one morning line, I would have absolutely zero interest. And if the horse goes off at like seven to two, I have zero interest. But at eight to one, it's it's just a horse that should be, you know, four to one. And so you're, you're getting paid. Um, you're getting paid there to, you know, um, to be right or wrong. Um. Well, this is weird. Hold on a minute. Did I, did I, did I screw something up? Hold on a minute. Why in the fifth race do I have that same horse? Oh yeah, no, no, on, on both. Um, so she can't sing, they're cross-centered. And Mona into, Stella uh, also, that was Mona not Stella. I had right, right, right. Which, which one, right. she's gotta be in one of them, right? But not the other. Correct, because okay. what they're thinking, I guess they're thinking if that race comes off the turf uh, to, uh, on Friday, that they have another opportunity to run um, on the turf on Saturday. That's what Okay, that's so weird. I, I was looking yeah. at this, I thought that I just handicapped everything wrong. So I think, um, 
I, 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 I go back to my same analysis. I think that the three is a lot. I don't want to watch. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. And, I, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll cheat and go back to mine. Is the, my, my, my horse, She Can't Sing, who I really liked. Uh, in yeah. the other turf race, cross yeah. inner, look, at, at 10 to 1, uh, you know, I don't like that it's a shorter field, I think. But I, but I, I think, you know, those two plays, yours and mine, are still value in this oh, morning against sure. the two Ch Chad Browns in here for sure. Okay, uh, Chad Brown, he's another guy who I can't seem to beat ever. I try to beat him as the favorite so many times. Sometimes he comes in as a, as a, as a first time starter favorite, uh, this one favorite. I, just, I can't beat him. Um, sixth race, what do we got? I mean, this is a good, you know, it's a nice, uh, good older horses, um, all kind of to me running the same kind of race. So you got to look a little, you know, deeper and try to get some value here. And I'm trying to make a story for the seven South Bend. Okay. Um, who, you know, was really good, got really good at the end of his four year old year, especially when you take out the turf races where he ran horrible. Um, and then he's got this, you know, what just looks like uh, a, a prep. And I mean, he's, he doesn't run short, but they put him running seven furlongs last month at Keeneland. Um, and he ran pretty well. But this is the spot. I mean, this is the spot that they're pointing to. And, you know, at eight to one, uh, you know, I'm just I'm going to take my chances with that, that, that my story is right. Um, and that this is this is this is his race. The other thing going in his factor is he's three of eight at, at Churchill Downs on the dirt. And so we talk about these horses that sometimes don't like other tracks. That's a horse for course, for sure. And he loves the racetrack. And that last race was absolutely just give him a race, you know, and then we'll take our chances in the big race, which is this is the big race. So that's my play there. Yeah, I I, I actually like the favorite here. I, I like uh well second bit. I, I like the shared sense. I think he's going to be tough. So if, I'll I'll either pass the race or I'll take a shot with yours uh, with South Bend. Um, yeah, maybe South I'll Bend. take a take a shot with that in the exact or something like that. Um, but I, I kind of like the favorite there. Uh, seventh race, on the other hand, I'll start with this one because I got I got I got two. Two bombs away. I got um the two trademark, and I have the twelve O captain. Um, not that they're you know standouts as far as chances to win, but they're standouts as far as value goes. Um, Prankster I think is fine, but Prankster's all all of his good races are sprinting. Um, so I don't know if I want to do that um, at at kind of a reduced price. Um, and everybody else to me is just kind of just a little either worse or no better. I think actually, I do think the, that the probably the most likely winner is the three. I would say Papa Cap is the most likely winner as far as sheets go. I mean, it's a perfect line. And uh, I just don't know if six to one is enough. Um, I mean, you know, it might be. I, I, but I do like the trademark. I like the 12 O captain. So for me, it's probably going to be some kind of two, three, 12 box or something like I mean, Papa Cap is was one of my early Derby picks, which oh, played really? out. Okay. Yeah, I just thought he would develop from his his last race uh, when he ran second to you know in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He didn't develop at all, um, but he, yeah, but not, he ran. Not yeah, not much. He can't he can't win the Derby. I mean. Yeah, but 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 I mean, he's still fast, you know. Yeah. So I think if you get a price over six to one, that's the that that would be a play. I'm going to go back to my old boy, uh, Al Stahl. I know, I know that he, that, that, that this horse, the nine Trafalgar, he, he, he thinks he has a lot of talent. He got, he got really, um, you know, he was high on him and then he tried him out against better horses and he didn't run too well. He backed off. He's, he's pushed him again and he had a, just a huge work a couple of weeks ago. I, I think he's going to definitely outrun his 20 to one morning line. He's slower than the rest. But he also has the ability, I think, to develop a little bit because he hasn't been running so much. So, and he's one for one over the track, which is his maiden race going at this, you know, I think at this distance um, was just incredible. I mean, it was just a crazy, visually impressive race. He could be 30 to one here. He, I'm looking, you know, at least he could come second or third and juice up the trifectas and stuff. But he, he, he's, a, he's a play of the day kind of for me at that price. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you get six to one, for sure. I mean, absolutely. Um, all right, eighth race, I have no value here. I have I wrote down on my sheet, two, five, six, seven, no value. Um, 
Can you separate those? Do you like anything different? What do you like in the safe field? No, I think I think you're right. I, I I would even throw you know Kamari, who's can tend to run you know a nice race every now and then. Um, but I think Bell's the one loves the track. Point you know seven out of eight in the exacta. Um, pointed to this race again. I think the last race was kind of a throwaway, even though it was a Grade One. Um, this is the one they want to win. And she runs well here. And I think, you know, I'm hoping maybe five to one is the price, but that's very doubtful. So in race number nine, I, these, these are the races where I, I'm hoping you give me a little guidance because I, this is just <laughs> what I do because I have four horses that I like here and they're all long and they're literally no better than anybody else. But just because that they're longer, I'll just probably try them. And that's going to be the one smoking tea, the three red run, the four red danger, and the ten. Uh, no, and yeah, and the nine stolen base. They all look just as good as anybody else here. Um, do you like anybody really strongly? Any any of that? You know, anything trip related? Anything you like this race? What do you got here? I like stolen base. Um, I think that this is a turf horse. Clearly, even though. He, he won on the dirt first out, which is a positive. Um, but then he, then he started running him on the turf and he ran really well and his turf starts. And then they put him on, you know, kind of a track. Hey, is this horse good enough to get to the Derby? we got to try him out on synthetic. He ran well on synthetic, but this horse ran a really big number at Del Mar on the turf in November. I'm expecting that this horse exceeds that number today because he's exceeded his you know his overall number his number in his last two synthetic races he's just developing well and i think he i think this is a nice play um on the turf on the turf only tomorrow stolen so base the 10th race i want to give this is an example to turn a a, a a poker phrase a fancy play syndrome and this is this is this is this is <laughs> That is something I do from time to time as a sheets player. And I'm, I'm not going to make a mistake this time because I want to be, I, I do want to be live going to the Derby. Um, and so let's look at it from a sheets perspective. So you have some solid horses here. I mean, you have, let's go from the bottom down, which I like to do sometimes. Because I do think that people, when they start, oh, yeah. number one horse, they like forget, you know? And I think that, oh, anyway, so Suzanne's got a seven and eight, totally solid. You have mind control. Maybe this is a prep race, so it's got six and sevens to go back to, just as good. Then you got prevalence, super strong, eight and a seven. Uh, reinvestment risk, I, I don't like. Um, we'll get back to that in a second. Jackie's Warrior, just okay, but whatever. It's got a six. The, the fancy play syndrome horse, and I'm just going to have to use it, is this is this Sir Alfred James Um because it, it's totally just kind of like crippled and with reap with variance, but just kind of follow along here. So it ran a six. This is back wherever. Then it had a total bounce off race, which is probably supposed to do. But so every time it races, this is what happens. It's got a seven, bounces to a 12. Got a six, then bounces to a 10. Then it's got a couple of eight and nine, bounces to a 15. Then it goes forward a couple of nines. Then it totally X's and runs a 23 on the dirt. It takes a little while, and then it runs a freaking five, which wins this race just pretty easily, actually. Then it's got an off race and a double dot, which is both in the mud. And then two terrible races back to back and it's coming forth. Like I sometimes get oh, get get carried away and just play these things too often. Um, but I am going to use this as part of a kind of a spread, okay? Like if I'm not gonna, if I'm not gonna play, you know, take a big stand here, I'm just gonna flick it in, okay? Because this is, you talk about like, uh, whatchamacallit, like a DFS plays. These types of variance plays, guys that always like kind of like react to good races, come back off of bad races. These are bad horses at five to two, but like really just worth shocks at like 40 to one. So um, I'll just throw that one into my spread pool. I'll, I'll, t I'll, I'll enhance your feeling. Is his, he's five out of what, eight win at, the, at Churchill? Um, and his five out of his six best races Figure wise, or Churchill Downs races. So that's even better. There you go. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely a use. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't, I like prevalence here. I think he's a pure sprinter and just can, can improve off his last. He is improving. Younger horse can improve off his last couple. That's what I'm using. Uh, you can go first in the 11. I didn't really. I mean, I'm going to have to probably spread. I'll probably end up going with, I guess, the 10, Sand 10. 
um, another, I mean, I'm a homer fairgrounds, but he's getting blinkers for the first time. He's fast already. He might be the fastest. Um, and I think, you know, if you're just looking for a change or something to create a, uh, uh, a spark in this horse, just the blinkers, maybe, maybe the, you know, maybe the thing that does it. And I think you're going to get a little bit of a price on him today. The last couple of times he's been bet down pretty bad. Uh, so that's, I'll, I'll, I'll land on the 10 there. And I'll, once again, I'll, I'll show the sheets for this race to give you an idea of the way I kind of look at this one. So look, we're going to start with Santon from the bottom. So he's got a seven at two, which is a really, really strong race. And then I think it bled in its last race. Um, and then it, it kind of ran forward. And, and this P, by the way, this means kind of a slow paced race, which you could uh, judge they may have been able to do better if the pace weren't quite, quite as slow. Um, so this can certainly run a seven. It can certainly run something good. And then you have Kentucky Ghost here, who's running these eights last year, and, and certainly nothing wrong with that at 20 to one. Um, and so aside from that, I mean, you got Cheryl Spite, who can run a seven. Mira's Mission at double digit odds can run a seven. So Again, there's no real standout. So when there's no real standout, you just kind of have to be a stickler for value here. So I do like your Santin. Um, you put blinkers on, like you said, creating a little bit of variance there for you. Uh, I do like Kentucky Ghost at, at 101. I like Mira's mission at 101. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and just because they're just as likely to win as these others. Um, and Cheryl Spike's fine, but three to one. I mean, look, I'm going to use it just because, again, there's like a like billion of one shots I probably want to be alive with in the Derby. Um, but, uh, but, uh, no real huge standout for me. So, so I guess, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to start with the Derby and, and what as, as usual, not as usual, because so, sometimes a Derby doesn't look, look this way, but this particular Derby, at least from a sheets perspective is unfortunately one of those races where you could, there are a lot of horses that can win and they're, some of them are going to be really short and some of them are going to be not are going to be really, really long. So um, I'm going to go through these from the bottom up, you know, and some of them might not have even drawn it. So rattle and roll is with, with it basically a 10 or a 12. I promise you that's not going to win this race. Rich strike 13. Um, wait, are we going to, oh, let, uh, wait. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got a classic it. causeway 11, 13. That's not going to do it. So cyber knife is, so far is the best, but we'll get to better than him. He's got an eight, but mostly 13s and 11s. Kind of an okay pattern to maybe run at 10, but I don't know. So this white Abrario pair of eights, super, super, nothing to complain about. I mean, it's got a 12 or two. It's got two eights. So this is what we're kind of setting the groundwork for. Like, who's going to beat this? A barrier, Barber Road, no. Simplification is okay. I mean, it's got an eight. You know, a couple, couple off races, um, if you consider those off races. So simplification can run the eight. So this eight looks to be the one to start with. And then you get to this Taiba. And, and, and you know what? Um, one person would say it's done nothing wrong, right? It's got a seven and it's got a six. And another person would say, I prefer, you know, that if it ran it two a little bit, you know, and, and developed a little more instead of just coming straight out of the gate and, it's third lifetime start trying to win the Kentucky Derby at a mile and a quarter. You know, that's, that's kind of a lot to ask. Um, but on numbers, it, it, it certainly looks really strong. Um, Pioneer of Medina looks, you know, really good. You know, it's got a nine, it's got an eight, it's got the aforementioned Todd Pletcher training, you know, certainly worth, worth looking at. So Zandone is unfortunately looks really good, you know, literally done nothing wrong but he's three to one. That's kind of annoying, right? Um, but then you get Tiz the Bomb. It's got that same eight. It's got a shot. Charge it with an eight and a 10, small shot. No crown pride. Messier, a pair of eights, has a shot. Smile Happy has a really nice little line here. You know, it's got a 14, a 10, a nine, seven. Literally done nothing wrong. And then we'll finish off with this epicenter, also has done nothing wrong, 12, 11, 8, 6. So you have, and then you get to Mo Donegal with a 9 and a 7. So it's not always like this, but you've got a lot of horses here that can do something. Now, if you remember the names of the horses I brought up, Epicenter is 7 to 2. You know, Zendone is 3 to 1. But some of these, like, smile happy at 20 to 1 with, I'm pretty sure, another Louisiana guy, I think, in Corey Lannery, um, 
Um, I mean, it's hard for me to like say I like one over the other, but I I would really play these play these long shots. I would play Tis the Bomb. I would play Smile Happy. Um, I would play maybe a little Cyber Knife. Um, and, and I would be less inclined to play the horses like Zandon and Epicenter. And maybe, maybe I would be so stingy to not even play mm. Messier or a, a White Abario. I mean, it's, it's, it's a war. A lot of horses can win. But I would, I would listen, if someone says, who are you playing in the contest? You got one horse. Uh, smile happy. You know what I mean? Like, that would be it. Def, I agree, and, and look, I'm, I was looking at the thoroughgraphs as you were growing through, and it's almost, except for the number difference, but it's just almost the same patterns, right? So, right. so they tend to get these races right, you know, because they're running in the big races, and so they get the numbers right. Um, this is not a year where I'm like against somebody, right? You know, which yeah. which which I have been in the past. So this is a year where, it, I say this every year, but it's the toughest race of the year to handicap. Yeah. But um, I'm not against anybody. And I also don't really have like a, a golly, a, like a real strong, like, okay, this horse is going to roll. So there's, there's another way you could play this though. Sheets is like, I agree. I think Zandon is the most likely winner yep. to me. He's yep. the most likely winner. Yep. So because you're getting, you know, so much value, not in the wind pool, but like in an exact or a trifecta pool. Just put pool. him on top with the bombs. In the Correct. Year. Correct. And that's what I'm going to do. I know I'm going to have tickets with Zandon on top of the ones that you kind of mentioned, especially right. Smile Happy, especially Mo Donegal. Um, you know, Mo Donegal looks like a Belmont winner to me, um, but I think he could run second or third. Epicenter, sure, you know, um, but but you could pick any any of the ones that you just mentioned and throw them underneath Zandon and you're going to get paid. You're going to get paid. Did, so, did you, let, me ask you, let me ask you this yeah. for the Derby. Do people still look at dosage and things like that? Um, no. That used, to no. Be, that used to be a huge yeah. deal. That you couldn't, yeah. win, you I, couldn't win unless you had the dosage until strike the gold right. one. And then and, right. then, 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 and, now, and now we're betting a horse. Uh, you know, we both like a horse smile happy. He's about run happy. He was about, he's nothing. He was nothing but a sprinter. Oh, cool. Right? I mean, he, yeah. So okay. uh, I'm going to play it two ways probably. So I'm going to play the Zandon on top because I do think he's most likely winner. Um, and then I'll, I'll end up playing some, uh, some smile happy and some Mo Donegal, um, over, you know, a couple others, just because I think the race has a possibility to fall apart, which in, in the last five or six years has really not had that. Po There's just a lot of, a lot more horses to me that look like they want to go to the front and can get to the front w together than there have been in the past, you know? Um, so in that case, that's old school derby where you would have those sprinters in there that would set yeah. it up for the, for the come behinders. And we don't have that recently because of the point system, but I think there's more of that this year than has been in the past. And so I think a Mo Donegal is, is live at, at 12 or 15, not at eight or 10, you know, smile happy is certainly live. Um, and also, you know, I kind of like a little pioneer Medina, just again, the change, but I think Zandon is the most likely winner. And the complicating thing is he could be four, he could be nine to two because Epicenter might be the favorite and you got Mattress Matt coming in to bet $4 million in the wind pool, which would make Epicenter five to two or two to one. And that would drive up Zandon, but the opposite could be true. Zandon could be the favorite. You know, he could be two to one, five to two of Mattress Mac. That's $4 million. So I'll, 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 I'll tell you what would be fun. What would be fun is if in, in, in light of last year, you getting beat by Medina Spirit, that you got Pioneer <laughs> of Medina to come in and, and, right. and get it for you. I think that would, right. I think that would be just, I think that would be legendary. Um, well, that sounds like a, that sounds like a bet. So, that's, so, I'll definitely have some pioneer for Dave. Yeah. So 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 for those of you that, that looked at my horse racing videos normally, and I do go through like two cards in like in like six minutes, right? Mm -hmm. I warned you guys that eventually I would I would gather your attention for a little bit longer, and 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 if you know, and if any of you say, "Oh my God, that was so long," I honestly don't care. It was by far my most enjoyable two hours doing DFS in the last three years. Um, uh, and what we're going to probably try to do is I'm going to, I am going to have Mark try to somehow tag this so that they can put, you know, if you want to hear about, you know, 
you know, uh, you know, uh, Evangeline buzzer stories, you can go here. If you want to you can go here, you want to go just for the pics, you can go here. But I, I, I really enjoyed it. And um, uh, thank you so much for coming on, Michael. And uh, uh, Good luck with all of your other stuff. Good luck with your yeah. Uh, what what what? Real quick, what what else do you do? You tend to do politics. You do uh. What else do you do? Okay. I tend to do politics. That's my that's my that's my day job. I'm yeah. I do politics. I do uh, I sell brochures. As, right, as right, 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 right. Like PR. I, stuff. I, I, I do direct mail for campaigns all over. Yeah. Uh, so my one, my one my one story, which I will leave you this, and I'm not. I listen. One one thing I one thing I I've, I've learned in life, okay, in business and in life, is there are three things that you that you never well two things you never discuss with anybody okay one is politics and the other is religion okay and and i added a third one to it this year and that being covid right um, yeah. um which is probably a little bit of both and as i get really older i'm starting to learn that i should really never talk to anybody anything ever for any reason okay <laughs> but, but i bring up this story only because you're from bat from your from your baton rouge and, It'll go through this, this last story. So, so back um, when I lived in New Orleans, it was, you know, 1989 through 1992. And there was one, uh, I went to two LSU games um, in uh, uh, football games. And one of them was in, I think it was 1990. Uh, I drove out there and the difference between New Orleans and, and to Baton Rouge is literally like two different, two different universes. Right. And, and I don't want to listen, I don't want to get too much into it, but, but when, when, when I went out there, you know, you could just tell you're kind of different. You know what I mean? Like when I was like going out to an LSU football game, you know, let's just put it that way. And it was pouring rain. I was with people as they're playing Florida state. It was drenched. Okay. And so everybody there was in their LSU yellow parkas. All right. And it was, it was, it was an incredible scene. And then about halfway through the game, the entire stadium, turned got stood up and stared at like one of the ramps where you know people come in and out and gave an insane like standing ovation for somebody and i didn't know who it was because everybody was wearing like a, uh wearing just the same yellow parka and i looked i'm like who is that and they said that's david duke he was <laughs> he was he was at the time running for uh, oh, running Lord. for governor, the governor. Uh, yeah. for governor over there, and I at the time was helping to to volunteer with the committee of racial equality in New Orleans. And when I saw that, I'm like, I gotta get the hell out of here. Um, I didn't, but uh, so that that's another my last Louisiana story. I miss it. I can't I can't wait to go back to to the fairgrounds again. I've been back in a long time, but 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 when I do, we we're we're totally going out. Um, and, yeah, let's uh, get you back there this year for sure. Absolutely, uh, I'm gonna miss Jazz Fest again, but but we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll 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 do, we'll do something one of these days. We'll kick it old school and we'll go. There's no more JD, but we'll uh, no. we'll go to like a fairgrounds on a random Wednesday. <laughs> and then Absolutely. Hang out. All right, dude. You're this the was man. fun. This yep. was fun, Chase. Thank you. Thanks for All having. Right, take me. care. Enjoyed it. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, stop recording.